The Delhi Service Bill likely in Parliament on Monday. The Delhi Service Bill is circulated among Lok Sabha MPs. The bill, once passed, will give the centre complete control over bureaucrats in the capital. A shocker from Kerala, a five-year-old girl is raped, killed and her body is dumped in a sack. The migrant girl's body found in a dump yard after she went missing for 21 hours. The accused, also a migrant from Bihar, arrested in an intoxicated state. 39 people die in a Pakistan blast. The blast was at an Islamic party's meeting. The blast uh, was near the Afghan border. No group has claimed responsibility for the blast yet. 21 opposition MPs on a two-day visit to Manipur. They meet the governor and submit a memorandum as well. In a strongly worded memorandum, they say the Prime Minister's silence on Manipur shows his brazen indifference. And well, they also say there's a complete breakdown of law and order in the state. A soldier on leave goes missing in Jammu and Kashmir's Kulgam. The family alleges terrorists kidnapped the soldier. Please release him. The family's desperate appeal. Our top story, well, the contentious bill to replace the Delhi ordinance will be tabled in the parliament on Monday. Well, the bill has already been circulated among Lok Sabha MPs. The bill has a major flashpoint now between the centre and the opposition alliance. Well, this, as uh, the bill when passed, will give complete control over services and civil servants in Delhi to the centre. The big question is whether the government will be able to get the bill passed in Rajya Sabha, where uh, the centre does not have majority, but numbers are stacked up in their favour after Jagan Mohan's Vyasar Congress extended its support to the government. So all eyes now on how this bill will play out once it's tabled. But what is its significance in terms of how the centre plans to introduce this? Well, Akhilesh has the details. So this bill has been circulated among the Lok Sabha MPs and this bill is likely to be tabled by the Home Minister Avisha tomorrow in the Lok Sabha. Of course, uh, in the Lok Sabha, the government has a comfortable majority, so it won't have uh, any difficulty in getting it passed in the lower house. But when it goes to the upper house, as you mentioned correctly, uh, Delhi Chief Minister Mr. Arvind Kejriwal has been mobilizing support against this bill. He has been meeting with various uh, opposition leaders. In fact, we have been told by the sources that uh, the opposition will try to, you know, uh, uh, give it a fight, tough fight uh, to the government when it, the bill comes in the Rajya Sabha in the upper house. And we have been told by the sources that some ambulances have been arranged uh, to get the uh, members who are not well. Uh, for example, former Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh, uh, he's not keeping well, but he will be brought uh, to the house. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, leaders and Rajpa MPs like uh, Jadu MP Vashish Narayan Singh, who is not keeping well, he will be brought uh, uh, to an ambulance. And of course, uh, Shibu Soren, who is a, a senior JM leader. So of course, uh, opposition does, does not want to take any chances and they they are uh, planning a show of strength uh, in the Raj Sabha. Of course, we know that uh, the opposition has been protesting. Uh, they are not allowing the house to function. But when, the, when this bill comes, they have decided to uh, pause the uh, protest and they will get uh, this bill to be discussed and also get voted. So that there will be clear cut demarcation who is standing where. Of course, the government will have no difficulty in upper house also because the Vyasa Congress party has decided to support uh, this crucial bill. So with the Vyasa CP support, the, the government will have more than 122 MPs uh, support, supporting this bill, which is more than the half a mark. So, there won't be any problem. So the key features remain the same. As for the, it is identical to the ordinance which was issued on the uh, May 19th. And uh, once this bill is passed, this will repeal uh, the ordinance and this, this will replace uh, the ordinance and this will become the law uh, for uh, transfer, posting and other vigilance matters regarding uh, Delhi office. And well, after a week of uh, logjam, the parliament will convene again on Monday. The five key bills that have been listed include the, the Biological Diversity Amendment Bill, the Forest Conservation Amendment Bill, and also the Mediation Bill 2021. The Press and Registration of Periodicals Bill is also included. The Advocates Bill is also among them. Well, the Biological Diversity Bill is among the most crucial bill in the bills tabled. And well, in other news, at least 39 people were killed and dozens more wounded by a bomb blast uh, at a political gathering of a radical Islamic party in northwest Pakistan. As per officials, the blast targeted the Jamiat Ulema Islam 
Fazl party when more than 400 members and supporters gathered under a tent in, a, in the town of Khar near the border with Pakistan, with Afghanistan, I beg your pardon. Well, images from the blast site circulating on social media showed bodies strewn around the scene and volunteers helping blood-soaked victims to ambulances. So far, no group has claimed responsibility for the attack, but the Taliban has attacked the party previously, particularly in this particular area. And shocking news coming in from Kerala. A five-year-old girl was raped, strangled to death and her body was dumped in a sack in Kerala's Arnakulam district. The little girl was from Bihar. She was missing for nearly 21 hours, but her dead body was found in a dump yard covered with garbage near the market area. And the police have arrested the accused, who is also from a migrant worker family. Uh, the police also presented the accused before the court. And when my colleague Tanish Punjabi spoke to the Kerala governor, who says that the strictest punishment should be given to the accused. very unfortunate and I do not know what to say because this is absolutely unacceptable not just in Kerala anywhere in the country and uh, I think the basically the duty is to ensure that they are not they don't deserve to be, to be called human beings and treated like that they are, they are like beasts so Whatever stringent action can be taken under the law must be taken. Uh, sir, if we recently we have seen a lot of crimes have been, have been committed. Okay, no, in... I don't want to talk about the individual places, but anywhere, yeah. if you do anything which is repugnant to the dignity of a woman, this is a very severe crime. I am saying even ordinary things. If you do which is repugnant to the dignity of a woman, then it is a shameful thing. Makale Mapu. Dear daughter, so sorry. This is what the Kerala police posted on social media after they found the body of a five-year-old child 20 hours after she went missing. The girl was brutally raped and strangled to death. Police started searching for the child after a missing report was filed on Friday night. CCTV footage revealed that she was abducted in the afternoon by a neighbor. The accused was apprehended within hours, but he was reportedly too intoxicated to answer questions. After seeing a Facebook post by the Kerala police on the missing girl, a man had approached them saying that he had seen the accused with the child near Alua market and had got suspicious and even asked him who the child was and the accused had told him that it is his daughter. That is how the police started searching the Alua market area. The police searched a dump yard behind Alua market in Ernakulam where her mutilated body was found in a sack hidden by garbage on polythene. Upon investigation, there was one person whom the family approached. Uh, he is a chicken shop owner and uh, in his CCTV footage we could see the uh, uh, Ashfaq uh, traveling along with the girl. So from that time we were able to identify that this might be the guy and that is how we identified him and we picked, up, uh, picked him up from uh, uh, Alue in the night. Both the accused and the family of the girl are from Bihar. The accused had just taken up accommodation on the first floor of the house where the girl lived. The opposition has accused the police of not acting in time to save the child. The most surprising thing is after this incident, the Kerala police posts a Facebook post and appeals for pardon. I should like to remind them that the police is given their salaries from the tax that is paid by the common citizen not to appeal for pardon for their mistakes but to take necessary action. <laughs> Hundreds who came to pay respects at the school where the child was studying in class 1 demanded capital punishment for the accused. With SP Babu in Kerala, Uma Sudhir, NDTV. 
And well, the other big headline, the 21-member multi-party delegation of MPs of the Opposition India Alliance that is in Manipur for two-day visit. They were in Manipur. They also met the governor and submitted a key memorandum. In the strongly worded memorandum, they said that the Prime Minister's uh, silence shows his brazen indifference to the violence in Manipur, adding that the failure of both the central and state governments to protect the lives and properties of the people of the two communities is apparent in the figures of more than 140 deaths, uh, more than 500 injuries and also internal displacement of more than 60,000 people. सारे लोग वहाँ के चीफ मिनिस्टर के खिलाफ शिकायत दर्ज करते रहते हैं हमारे सामने, लेकिन ये सरकार चीफ मिनिस्टर का वहाँ बैठे के बैठ वहाँ वहाँ उनको चेयर में बैठे बैठे हुए देख देख रहे हैं हम लोग। अभी तक उन्हें ये चीफ मिनिस्टर का बरकस नहीं किया गया क्यों? सारे मणिपुर की चाय और कुकी हो चाय मेथी हो हर संप्रदाय की लोग ये चीफ मिनिस्टर अब मणिपुर के खिलाफ शिकायत दर्ज करते थे हमें लेकिन उनके खिलाफ कोई कार्रवाई नहीं हुआ है लोगों में लोगों के अंदर सरकार पर जना सभी विश्वास नहीं है जना सभी भरोसा नहीं है सरकार जब भरोसा टूट चुके हैं सरकार के हम लोगों की निगाहों में तो सरकार कैसे चलेगा हमने कहा है कि शांति की फौरी तौर पर आवश्यकता है शांति न्याय के साथ यही हमने गवर्नर साहिबा को भी कहा और उनकी संवेदनाओं से हमारा भी दिल भर गया हमने सिर्फ समुदायों के बीच में रिश्ते की पुनर्वापसी की मांग की है क्योंकि शांतिपूर्ण सहस्तित्व के अलावा मणिपुर हो या मध्य प्रदेश हो कहीं भी कोई दूसरा विकल्प नहीं हालात खौफनाक दर्दनाक पीड़ादायक सामूहिक पीड़ा का क्षण है और देश को एक स्वर में संदेश देना होगा कि यह पीड़ा व्यक्तिगत भी है और सामूहिक भी है and well, news coming in from Jammu and Kashmir, an army soldier has gone missing in the Kulgam district of South Kashmir. 25-year-old rifleman Javed Ahmed was posted in Ladakh but was on leave in Kashmir. He has been missing since then. His vehicle has been recovered but now the family has appealed to terrorists saying that we will not let him work in the army but please release him. <laughs> Fearing the worst, this family of a missing soldier in Jammu and Kashmir's Kulgam district does not know who to go to for help. A search operation is on for rifleman Javed Ahmedwani, who has been missing since Saturday night. And his family believes he has been kidnapped by terrorists. They are so desperate, they are now appealing to the terrorists. लगे <laughs> वाइटमन से सर पेस कोमता नफर तो तेमुई है सुकर किडनी अब चाहे योसाइस स्वाइस बिचुस तेमन मेहरबानी हालम छुस बत्ते मंदारन तेम तराई तो ते तेम तराई तो तेमिस याल मेहरबानी मेहरबानी कर रहे तेम तराई तो तेमिस याल मैं हाथ से गायरे खानदार इंतिपियात साथ हार्ट पेशेंट बच्ची आकर से तो तेमिस गायरे पियात Javed Ahmed belongs to the Jammu and Kashmir Light Infantry Regiment posted in Ladakh. This morning his auto car was found near the market, reportedly blood-stained. In the past, several off-duty soldiers have been kidnapped and killed by terrorists in this area. Two years ago, the body of a missing soldier, Shakir Manzoor, was found 13 months after he was kidnapped in the Shopian district. So far, there is no official confirmation who is behind the disappearance of rifleman Javed Ahmed. And it is a painful wait for the family who appeals for the safe return of their soldier son, even as the security forces have launched a massive operation to rescue him. In Srinagar, Nazir Masoodi, Fendi TV. Welcome back. Let's get you some international news now. Russian forces have intercepted three Ukrainian drones over the city of Moscow, the country's defense ministry said, condemning what it called an attempted terrorist attack. Now, the drone attack on the Russian capital early on Sunday damaged two office blocks, according to Moscow's mayor, and briefly forced the closure of an airport in the capital and also the traffic around it. Moscow Mayor uh, Sergei uh, Sobyanin 
said that the attack insignificantly damaged the outsides of the two buildings in the Moscow city district. In fact, a security guard was also injured in this attack. This is what Russian state media has said, citing emergency officials. Now, Ukrainian officials who rarely comment on these um, kind of allegations by Russia have so far remained silent on this. And uh, there's been no response to Russia's allegation that this was an attack by Kiev. And well, it's persons of Indian origin all the way in the U.S. presidential race. Now an Indian origin engineer is in the fray as well. Harshvardhan Singh has made his bid for the U.S. presidential race. There are three persons of Indian origin that are now in the race to the U.S. top job. And well, he also claims to be what he calls a pure-blooded candidate. Here's why he says that. Indian-American engineer Harshvardhan Singh has announced his bid for the White House. The 38-year-old is the latest to join the pool of Republican candidates. Singh claims to be an American first conservative and a lifelong Republican. There is an all-out attack on American family values, parental rights, and the marketplace of ideas and open debate. We need strong leadership to reverse the changes that have occurred in the past few years and restore American values. The two other Indian Americans are already in the presidential race, Nikki Haley and Vivek Ramaswamy. Haley was South Carolina's first female minority governor. She says it's time for a new generation to lead the country. It's time for a new generation of leadership to rediscover fiscal responsibility, secure our border and strengthen our country, our pride and our purpose. Ramaswamy is a businessman largely funding his own campaign. If elected, he would be the youngest president in the United States history. We're skating on thin ice as a country right now. I think we may be heading on our way to a national divorce. I'm running for president because I care about a national revival instead. Ten years ago, Indians were barely represented in U.S. politics. Today, there are five Indian Americans in the Congress, around 50 in state legislatures, an Indian American vice president, and three running for the 2024 presidential race. With Chavi Mehra, Bureau Report, NDTV.